Hey guys, Cell here, welcome back to some more Cells in Burst Area. Let's get started by talking to Benoit. This thing could even catch a whale if you wanted to. The rest is up to you. Now get out there and fish up a big one. A Therian, you mean. Might as well give it a shot. It's not like anyone else remembers what we're here for. Oh, something's pulling the line! Stay calm. Fishing isn't about strength, it's about timing. Oh, okay, got it. Here it comes. You ready? <laughs> Damn right I am. I'll fillet it before it can even land. If it's a Therian, don't you dare kill it. Now! Heave! Treasure. Well, what do you know? Neither a fish nor a Therian. Well, shoot. Can't eat that. Oh. It looks like it fit you, though, Laffy said. Why don't you try it on? I concur. Maybe it'll bring out his unique personality. My unique personality, huh? See? What did I tell you? It looks great on you, Laffy said. Oh, jeez. You... you really think so? Yeah. Brings out your special charm, kiddo. Come on. Back to Therian fishing. Oh. Hey, you don't need to take it so seriously. I have to catch the Therian. Maybe then Velvet will see me for who I am. Uh, not a bite. Oh, quit your grumbling. Who was it who said fishing doesn't always go how you think it will? <laughs> Spoken like a true heartless pirate. Oh, hey! I've got something! <sighs> Whoa! Looks like I'm next! What a treasure. They're all cosmetics. <sighs> Not a single decent catch. I think it's decent. Huh? He's putting them all on, huh? Oh, jeez. <laughs> you found a look all your own. Ah, the vagaries of youth. <laughs> you don't take half measures, do you, kid? Hmm? What's wrong, Luffy said? You look ridiculous. Take that off. Stop it! What do you know about me, anyway? I... I know that looks silly on you. All you know is you're Lofi! <laughs> oh, jeez. Hey, Velvet! Something's pulling on your rod! Huh? Oh. It's a big one! Give it everything you've got! I know what I'm... It's... It's a big one, all right, but... A pot. Yay. But what's a pot doing out here? There's something inside it. Is the Therian inside? Ah! Yep. Well... I don't know. An octopod? I wish they'd stop making those noises. Watch out! They're armed to the squeak! And they're shouting, Let's squeak them ring! Must you? I unleashed all my power. Maybe I overdid it. Phew. That was scary. Be more careful before you approach a suspicious object. You think Laffy would have stayed back? That has nothing to do with this! 
Hold on. There's something else inside. Fight the shambling dead? A zombo pot! For a bunch of dead guys, they're awfully, uh, mushy. For the support for the healthy octopus diet! Come on, really? An octopus army? A horde of undead? What the hell is this pot? Magnificent. To think I'd get to see one with my own eyes. Huh? Is there something special about this creepy old pot? <laughs> creepy, you say? That's why these things need to be left to the professionals. Listen and behold. This is none other than a water jug made by the potter Groon during King Clauden's reign. It was a legendary once-in-a-millennium masterpiece. But it was lost in the Second Warring States period 200 years ago. Assertive, yet not ostentatious. The piece draws you in with its stately curves and the subtle shimmer of its colors, which belie a hidden savagery. <sighs> Two lectures in one day. <sighs> yeah, he's talking gibberish, but that's men in general, I suppose. The lost glazing technique of the Orosaurin is so vibrant, it looks like it could start moving at any moment. It, which it can. Therian. Oh, and start moving it did. Look out! The pot's a demon! Whatever you guys do, make sure you don't smash it! So, can I slash it? That's even worse! Stop arguing and fight already! Damn it! Crushing weight! Hurry, get double hit! Killing flash! But I'm this close! I won't miss! Form zero! Benjamin Smith Acerite. Face the maximum level to which Prim may be enhanced to 6. Okay, so I was wrong. It's finally decided to behave itself. Wait, Velvet! Don't eat it! It's a pot. I'm not gonna eat it. <sighs> I guess there weren't any Therians to be found here after all. Yeah, if there'd have been any, you'd think Ol' Eisen's Reaper Curse would have drawn him out. Oh, so that's why all we caught today were weird, useless things. Right. I forgot about the curse. So all this was Aizen's fault, huh? Funny how quickly you get used to it. Oh, my power didn't end up helping us out at all. Nope. Oh. But I know you're not the type to give up after a little setback. 
Isn't that right, Fee? Huh? Fee? It's your nickname. Not a whole lot of thought put into it, but... You're you. You're Fee. Velvet. Fee. I like it. It has personality. Thanks. Of course, if you still feel like giving up. No, I'm gonna find us the next Earth Pulse point. Oh, hey. There's something else inside the pot. This golden luster, it's... It's Oracalcum! I get it now. This must be where that ship sank all those years ago. The one Kurogane told us about. Hell yeah! Kurogane might actually be able to make me an Oracalcum sword. Nice find, Aizen. You too, Lafayette. It wasn't easy, but we didn't come away empty-handed. And just getting a chance to fish again was lots of fun. Yeah, I had a really good time too. Even I was entertained. Especially your little costume show, kiddo. The sun's going down soon. Let's head back to Titania. Got the oil calico, which is nice. Falcon's Creus treatment. Right. Special training. Now it's up to you. Huh. Let's see. Next on the list is... Did I? Yeah, I already did that. Falkins Kriya Trinket. Miniature obelisk unearthed from the Amarsian subcontinent. It appears to be an artificial crystal made by an ancient civilization, but their methods remain unknown. This is a very rare stone called Kriya's, and it's clear as a crystal, which is... Rarer still for us to find this fragment. It was a lucky break. Fragment? A lucky break? I wasn't trying to make a pun, I swear. Well, I thought it was funny anyway. Was it? <laughs> well, I guess there's no turning off this sharp wit of mine. You said it w with a such a straight face, too. That's funny. That's the funniest part. It was supposed to be a joke. A mask obtained under Barbados Art Archipelago. Archipelago. I still can't remember the day name. Some believe it to be the mark of a peerless swordsman, while others say it was worn as punishment by a traitor. This is made from the bone of some monster. This mask has a disturbing aura about it. Hmm. It's got several nicks on it, so I'm sure it was worn during some very fierce fights. Why not try putting it on, Rokuro? It just might be your style. I admit, it's a fine piece of protective gear, but I'll pass on it. Cut before it being cut. That's one get you's philosophy. The best defense is a good offense, in other words. Not quite, it's more like the best offense is a good offense. I, I see. Well, I hope I never have to fight a practitioner of the wrong gets to style. Our treasure board has come together. Eleanor. do they have in common? What are you up to? I'm compiling everything we know about Earth Pulse points, starting with what the ones in Ward Forest and Polymedes have in common. I'll compare those points with the ones that didn't have any Therians. Then, I'll factor in everything I currently know about the Abbey's deployments. Once that's done, I'll match all that information against what we know about the locations Lafayette was able to sense. When that's completed, we should be able to tell which locations are more likely to house a Therian. You're really going all out, aren't you? Must you sound so incredulous? 
If you're going to do something, then give it your all. There is no other way to live. R right. I'm counting on you then. I'm not doing this for you. This is for me and for Lafayette. Do you even understand why that boy's trying so hard? Yeah, I do. Lafayette! I spy! I spy! Uh, I can't, Kamawana. I I've got stuff to... I spy with my little eye! Something that starts with V! Velvet. <sighs> okay, I'll try. Uh, is it... Velvet? <laughs> no fair! How'd you do it so fast? Wait, Kamawana, I'm sorry. You don't have to cry. <laughs> Poor Fee. Jeez. That's because he got it right, Kamawana started crying. Let me get that freaking spirit orb. Oh, hey, Velvet. You don't mind if I give Kudogane that orichalcum you fished up, do you? Doesn't matter to me. But do you really think he can make a weapon with that? Well, I don't know. What does the expert think? Conventionally, no, it's impossible. But when has convention ever stopped a demon? I won't argue that. We're dealing with the hardest metal in existence. But I'm ready to cast aside all doubt. To focus everything on forging my greatest creation. If anybody can do it, it's you. Good luck, Kurogane. Yeah, best of luck. If you can make Rokuro stronger, you'll be helping me out too. Alright. Have you been practicing your dove impression, Velvet? What? No. Now, now, a performer in Mogilu's menagerie has to be more diligent than that. What if we're stopped at a checkpoint and the guards ask you to perform a trick? If that happens, I'll show them my trick where I devour an entire witch faster than the blink of an eye. Oh, that would be a sight indeed. But seriously, if you ever want some magic tricks up your sleeve, let me know and I'll teach you some. Just 10,000 gold each. I mean, I've got the cash. So any practice is the key. If you don't play in real life, you'll never be a real McCoy. You have to perfect your art to be a juggling of vengeance. Ask me where the next Earth Pulse is, so... Eleanor. Magilu. Bukuro. I still have to talk to Aizen. Uh, just so happens to not be here. I mean, technically it could be a mistake and I don't need to talk to him. But you never know. Aha! There's someone to talk to down here, huh? Hey, Kuragane, let me ask you something. More complaining, is it? Come on, don't be like that. Every time I turn around, Velvet or one of the pirates is telling me to go make some delivery to some island. I can never get a break. Isn't that just a sign they think you're a dependable guy? Maybe, but I don't see them sending you off on errands. It's like they take one look at your face and decide to leave you alone. I don't have a face. Oh, right, sorry. The slip of the tongue. Maybe you just don't know how much work I do around here. It's more than you think. Anything to do with iron, I do it. Making tools, repairing things. What do you take me for? Some kind of cheeky freeloader? I don't even have cheeks. <laughs> You're too funny! But doesn't it ever annoy you to have all these kids giving you orders? I've spent my entire life thinking of nothing but forging swords. It's been centuries since I've interacted with youngsters like them. They can be a hassle, but at least it's a new hassle. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, so I went along with whatever they asked. But I've been too nice, so they keep pushing work onto me. Maybe if I hadn't been so helpful, they would have stayed out of my face like they stay out of yours. I don't have a face. That's not the point. Aren't you even listening to what I'm saying here? You need to make up your mind. 
You and I got on this ship alongside these people, who are putting themselves in great danger in order to live the lives of their choosing. If you don't like it, then go on and get off this ship with your tail between your legs. Yeah, except I don't have a tail right now. Jeez. And Kurogani, you have you do have cheeks. You have ass cheeks. Alright. Currently don't know where Aizen is. If I can even find him, that is. Okay, I found the other side of the uh prison. How can I be prepare beds if you need to rest? No. Huh. Searching for eyes and I found the other side of the island. This side looks much more pleasant than the other one. Well... I'm just gonna assume that Aizen's not here after I check the tower. Alright, Fee, since I can't find Aizen, you're up. Hey, what do you say we track down another Therian? Sure. From what I can tell, the next closest Earth Pulse Point is near the center of Midgand. Midgand, huh? The capital's not far from there. I wonder how things are now that Griffin's gone, though. Only one way to find out. Maybe so, but Aizen's not here, you know. You're right. I haven't seen him in a while. We should probably ask Benwick where he wandered off to. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, hold on. There's a letter here. On pretty cutesy stationery, too. Of course. Let's just have a quick look-see. As the cold turns bitter and the snow piles up on the mountains, I cannot help but think of you and hope you are in good cheer. As for myself, I am the same as ever, although I recently acquired a rare item that I shall be sending your- It's rude to read other people's letters, you know. Yeah, but how else are we supposed to find out whose it is? Does it say who the sender is? Uh... Uzva Mewu Wexov. Who the hell is that? Probably someone on this island, if I had to guess. Hey! Anybody lose a letter? Do any of these folks look like the type to write a fancy letter? Point taken. Isn't his sister? It could be one of the pirates. Why don't we go to the docks and ask around? Fine. Just don't forget our mission. Oh, Sizen was never here to begin with. That's so sad. I looked all over for him. I tried. Oh, look. Now he's no here. No reply this time either. Eh, but she's doing okay. I can say he's that much. That's good to hear. I can rest easy then. How's about getting that pot wrapped? I's got this new sunflower print, huh? How's that sound? Hmm. Yeah, that one's cute enough. Let's go with that. Did... Did he just say cute? <clears throat> Help you with something? Someone dropped this letter. Do you have any idea who it might... You didn't read it, did you? Wait, it's yours? We didn't read it much you really didn't read it N no of course not put this letter in with the package who's got it when you ship with the turtles express rest assured your mail is in good hands if you're done here we're ready to head out our destination is midgand yeah i'm all set was he sending a gift to someone and with a letter, too. Gotta be a lady friend, that's for sure. You think? Either way, that letter was really polite. And did you see that penmanship? Yeah, I didn't know old Reaps had it in him. I can hear you two, you know. Ah! It's just to his sister. Better watch what we say from now on. Yeah. I noticed you've come up with your little name for the kid. You sure are the sentimental type, aren't you? Oh? 
Calling him Fee doesn't cost me anything, and it's not like I gave it much thought. That may be the case, but no one else has taken even that token effort. And in doing so, I wonder if maybe you were trying to encourage him to be his own being. After all, one requires a name before he can consider his own identity. Having been given a name, he realizes he is his own entity, separate from others, and a certain formless essence comes to life inside him. And you're the one who set that process in motion for the kid. Whether you intended to or not, you changed him from a puppet into a living being. So what's your point? I've been with you since the start of this journey, haven't I? Wouldn't kill you to give me a nickname, would it? Loud mouth. I never really thought of us as being that close. And besides, you just forced your way into the group. Come now! I know you've got a bigger heart than that! Surely you have it in you to give a nickname to a dear friend! We're not dear friends. And even if we were, I'm not good at nicknames anyway. Please! I'm begging you! Okay then. Magi. Oh, come on, that's so obvious! Can't you put some heart into it for your dear friend? Fine. Lou. Do I look like an old man to you? You're not even trying! Okay, then. Witchy Mick Witcherton. Interesting. Well, if I had to rank it against 1,000 other nicknames, I'd probably put it at number 1,011. A nickname needs to have charm. It needs to leave a lasting impression. Sure, then. Hattie. Now you're just saying what you see! Book skirt. That's not any better, either! Ms. Creepy Eyes. That's just an insult! Look, no nicknames based on what you see, and especially no slandering! Lil Miss Witch who smiles around you but stabs you in the back when you're not looking. Hey, that's personal information! Look, I told you. I'm not good at coming up with nicknames. Forget it! I should have known this wouldn't work! Aizen, what happened to those octopuses? Dial and Kurogane took them to the kitchen. They said they were going to make dinner for Kamoana. They're going to feed demons to her? Atheria needs malevolence to survive. That's why they carried them off alive. What do they plan on making? Octopus ink pasta with takoyaki and fried octopus on the side, and Helavisian octopus carpaccio. Do they have a takoyaki pan here at the prison? Kurogane hammered one out with some iron, along with a large pot for the pasta. <laughs> Still looking like that? Takoyaki would hit the spot right about now, though. Octopus ink pasta, huh? Like squids, octopuses release ink as a defensive mechanism. But theirs is made of different stuff and is used in other ways. Squid ink is stickier and acts like a decoy. But octopus ink spreads out like a cloud of smoke. But squid ink has 30 times the savory flavor. So octopus ink isn't used in pasta all that often. Luffy told me the same thing. He said that's why octopus ink pasta isn't very good. Luffy said that? Yeah, so I ended up not making it for him. But I wonder... I guess it doesn't matter, since I can't taste it now. I'll taste it for you then. So make me some octopus ink pasta sometime, alright? Alright, and I'll be sure to make some that doesn't come from demons. Hey, who did Aizen send that letter and cooking pot to, anyway? I don't want to think about it. That walloping still stings. You've got to be curious, though, right? Maybe. It was serious stuff. Whoever it is must be important to him. A lover, maybe? Aizen's lover? A child wouldn't be happy with that cooking pot, and a man wouldn't want it wrapped up so pretty. A young woman with Aizen's tastes, then. He'd be bound to fall for a miraculous match like that, right? I don't know. I bet she's that girl with the yellow umbrella. You really have a thing for her, don't you? I do not! That's not what I mean! Then pray tell, what do you mean? Huh? Eavesdropping, Eleanor? How unseemingly rude of you! Besides, Luffy said is free to like whomever he chooses. You're one to talk about eavesdropping, Moggy Lou. Anyway... It's just that the sunflower design on the wrapping reminded me of her. Now that you mention it... But does it really matter? He has someone to write to in any case. True. I can't help but feel a bit envious. What a nice way of summing it up, Velvet. So you were eavesdropping too, then. Uh. Say, what do you think about Aizen? Oh, so that's the kind of guy you're into, hmm? Huh. Not what I'd expect, but... No! 
I just feel there's something different about him. The way he picks presents, the objects that catch his eye. Oh, is that all? Boring. No kidding. All men have some kind of particular interest, big or small. I suppose that's true, but he seems a bit... shall we say, overly obsessive? Now that you mention it, he does have a tendency to ramble on about various topics. And it's not just the items he collects. There's more to it? Every weekend, he eats curry for dinner, and every time we go into port, he docks at the third ballard. Come to think of it, I heard the galley crew complaining that he always needs his pasta cooked exactly the right way. And when he needs a new outfit, he always goes to the same tailor and returns with identical clothes and boots. It all has to be exactly the same size and in exactly the same color. Turtle says he's very nitpicky. Sounds like he's not so much picky as he is a pain in the ass. But I do see a different side of him now. I thought pirates were all rough and filthy, but it seems they can be quite meticulous. Not much of a reassessment. It must not feel great only ever getting tails, I bet. Nah, I don't really mind that much. It's way too late for me to start letting that bother me. Yeah, but wouldn't it be nice to get heads at least once? Hell, I know I'd like to see that, and I bet Laffy said here does too. Yeah, I do. Right? That's why I've brought something a little special. Ta-da! What's so special about that coin? It looks identical to the one Eisen already has. The front side does, yes. But both sides of the coin are actually heads. I had Kurogane make it for me custom. If both sides are heads, then not even the Reaper's curse can stop it. Well, yeah, but that's cheating. What's the point in getting heads if it's rigged that way? It's not cheating. It's called effort and hard work. How? If you always work hard and never give up, you'll make your own way forward. All right, I'm in. I'll get that heads for you. With wow. the coin. Those birds are attracted to shiny objects, I suppose. Damn it! I can't even win against a crow. Don't sweat it. I figured something like this might happen, so I had a backup ready. Go on, give it a shot. You'll show that curse who's boss this time. All right, here goes. Away. I don't believe it! Now Prince Percival's griffin's gone and eaten the other coin right out of the air! Dang. Are you kidding me? Not to worry. I've got a spare backup. It's time to put that curse on notice. Right. Here I go. What the heck? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Reaper's curse or not, does it really have to go this far over a damn coin? It's fine, really. I had a feeling it'd turn out like this. Well, I sure didn't. Yeah, me neither. It, the coin just freaking exploded. Damn, that's a powerful curse. Hey, Eisen? Is there, uh... Anything we can do about the prince's hawk? Griffin, I mean. Every day, it goes out on these hunts or whatever, and brings back the weirdest stuff. It's making a real mess out of the deck. Hawk's hunt? What's the big deal? Well, yeah. At first it was bringing back good stuff like seaweed and fish, things we could cook with. Sure, I was glad for a while. But then it started to escalate. Now we're talking 150 kilo amber cans and 350 kilo killer swordfish that it's catching. That's not a bad thing, is it? It just means more to eat. It is when they're being dropped from the sky onto the deck. Especially those killer swordfish and razor-sharp bills! What if somebody gets run through by one? Can't you just warn the prince that his bird needs to be more careful? Yeah, we could, but he looks so happy watching his hawk, I'd hate to spoil it for him. Yeah, the prince looks so happy whenever Griffin is flying free. He kept grinning and asking Grocky all nice-like if he wanted to fly some more. Grocky? 
That's what Kamawana kept calling Griffin. She says she came up with it by combining Griffin and Hawk. <sighs> this is probably the first time in the Prince's life that he's tasted any freedom. His whole life he's only done what duty dictated of him. Letting Griffin fly was his first free act. To the Prince, Grocky is an extension of who he is. So what are we going to do? Nothing, really. It's not like it really hurt anybody. But it's punctured some major holes on the deck! I'm sure even the Prince knows when to rein it in. Let him have a little fun. He deserves it. I don't know about all that. I'd say the Prince is letting his newfound freedom get the better of him. Hey, I was just up on deck and it looks like Griffin's caught an elephant tuna this time. An elephant tuna? That's the really big tuna that can swallow a killer whale whole, right? That almost sounds like a demon to me. Yep. Huge fish, gills like elephant ears. I saw it myself. From the looks of it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon. It's crazy valuable. On a good day, it can fetch 20 million gold on the market. But there's something ominous about seeing it hovering in the air above the ship. 20 million gold? I take back everything I said. The Prince and Griffin can do whatever they want. Did she say above the ship? Oh, hell. Benwick, we need to stop Prince Percival. Aye, aye, sir. Hey! Don't drop that on the deck! Are you listening to me? Hmm. A second there, I thought the boat was a goner. Take a look at this. Aw, oh, really? Yeah, do me like that? Scout ship to. Hey there, Grin. May I ask you a question? What? You're an Earth Moloch, yes? Why live on the sea when your kind sinks in water? I live on the sea because I'm an Earth Moloch. I'd be curious to hear more. Eifried used to go on about how we should accept what we were born with. But one time he joked about the idea of a pirate who couldn't swim. And he laughed and laughed. I wanted to clobber him right then and there. But it wouldn't have changed the fact that I can't swim. I didn't want some predestined elemental affinity to control who I was. Instead, I underwent tough training to overcome it. Well, I guess that's one way to approach it. Did this training of yours bear any fruit? Well, as soon as I stepped into a river, a big flood brought down a landslide from the mountains and swallowed me up. Then, when I tried going into a lake, the seaweed suddenly multiplied and tangled around my body, nearly drowning me. And then finally, when I tried jumping into the ocean, a huge whirlpool formed with me at its very center. Huh. <sighs> the Reaper's curse at play? As far as I'm concerned, my Earth affinity and my Reaper's curse aren't much different, in that they've both shackled me since I came into being. This is about pushing and challenging the constraints I was born with. Huh. <sighs> so, did you eventually learn how to swim? Pretty much, yeah. As long as I never let go of my portable life preserver. Oh, huh. So, Aizen, without the Reaper's Curse, is essentially a devil food eater. Alright, makes sense. Where are we going? Investigate it in Midgan. So we're going to Zexin, right? Yeah, we're going to Zexin, I guess. I think so this is the only part of Midgand. We can go to. Hmm? The boss has given me a message for you. Says there's some sort of nasty demon running around in the Aldina Plains to the east of Logris. 
She thought it might be the one you're looking for. Wasn't the Eastern Highway closed off from Logris? That was only temporary. It's back open now. If you follow the road, you'll reach Stonebury Village. There you'll find one of ours who actually saw the demon. You want to know more? That'd be a good place to start. Got it. Hey, that's the same direction I sent Give the... Tabitha our thanks. looking more and more like we're on the right track. We ought to go check out that Bloodwing story. Then let's start by going to Stonebury. Hey, Aizen, did I say something wrong back there? No. I just didn't think we needed to give the Bloodwings any information for free. Huh? He means the Earth Pulse points, kid. We're the only ones who know about them. But aren't we on the same side as the Bloodwings? We're not enemies with them. But I wouldn't go so far as to call them our friends, either. That's just how it goes in the underworld. Things can change at the drop of a hat. A poison hat. But how are they supposed to trust us if we don't show them trust in kind? That messenger knew our faces, even though we'd never met. He was here waiting for us, even though we hadn't told anyone where we were going. You're right! We hardly know the first thing about them, and yet they seem to know every move we make. They could easily sell us out if it struck their fancy. They'll work with us as long as we're a useful ally in their resistance against the Abbey. But the more tricks we can keep up our sleeve, the better. We've got each other's back, but only as long as we hold a knife up our sleeve. That's what counts as trust in the Underworld. That sounds terrible, but at least you can trust that Tabitha's cooking will be tasty. <laughs> Can't argue that. This is everyone's first time to Stonebury, right? Why was it blocked off? Demons? No, there was a great tornado on the Aldina Plains that swallowed up a whole merchant caravan. Hundreds gone in an instant. The cooling of the climate is causing bouts of odd weather. Thunderstorms, heavy downpours and the like. Correct. The Abbey is keeping a tight guard on traffic through the affected areas. If it's open now, that must mean the tornado is gone. I wonder what sort of place it is. It's quite lovely. In the vast forest to the east, you can find gemstones, and it's teeming with rare plants and insects. The locals trade only as much meat and hides as they need, and they live peaceful, quiet lives. You sure know a lot about this place. It's where the Norman he first fell in love with grew up. Yes! Please don't embarrass me. Though we are apart from each other now, our hearts are still as one. Immediately after you and I made our pact and set off, she fell in love with some macho Norman and moved away. What? Why haven't I heard about this? How long have you known? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I found out during my long search for you. Or maybe it was right after we left. I remember leaving something in the village and going back to... Oh well, not like it matters. It does matter! There's no sense in crying over a fickle girl. Come, Stonebury awaits. So... Straight ahead. Well, that's at least nice and simple. But there's an event down here. Which means what exactly? And tell us to go kill a demon or something? The Eastern Plain is finally open for travel. I hear that the people of Stonebury are alive and well. My husband and I can breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> I wasn't worried about him at all. He talks tough, but he was really worried. Oh, sorry you don't know who we're talking about. It's his apprentice. What kind of apprentice? My husband's an architect. Even the royal family and the Abbey commission his work. He's been at the docks here on a job. He just finished and we're about to return to Logris. These people don't care about all that. Why did your apprentice go to Stonebury? He's young and talented, but a bit eccentric. 
He said he wanted to help create a new town, so he set off to the frontier. A craftsman has to focus on his work. Creating a new town. Ha! He should know his place. But my husband didn't disown him. That boy's fearlessness reminds me of my husband when he was young. So you understand how he feels then? I didn't say that. If he thinks he has the talent, he's free to do as he likes. But if he doesn't follow through with it to the end, I'll be done with him. Did you hear that? He thinks the boy can do it. If you ever find yourself in Stonebury, go visit that boy's workshop. <laughs> right, I'll do that. <laughs> Sorry about my husband. He can be a real grump. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty used to people like that. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? All right, then. Wonder what Stonebury is gonna be like. I also wonder we can go back to uh, Heloise, so that way I can continue the um, ancient remedy for the Omega Elixir. Oh wait, hold on. No, when mid -gand. Uh, uh West Gand or whatever it's called. I've never actually been on this side before. Oh, come on! over here? Anything? Well, there's a chest. Anything good? Life bottles. Boy, wouldn't it be great to be able to carry 99 of everything. Not just the random crap I can find on the ground. But that wouldn't happen unless it did New Game Plus. Which most likely would not happen. Who knows, anything can, be, can happen. I'm up here for three of these. Oh, I'm sage. I didn't just go there for spirits. I don't know. Don't so wait. The Hyperion's- the Imperian's throne is there. The Southern Danan Highway. I obviously can't go back up there again. I caused enough of a problem there last time. So next up is down here. I think that's how it's east of Lotus. We're currently to the west of Logris. Well, hey, now I know what was over here. to fight me now. Bulls think they can fight me? Now slide down here. Oh! Over here! Now I at least know where exactly we are. At least I hope I'm going the right way. Let me 
powers. I think I finally got a handle on them in a way that feels right. That's good. Hopefully you won't faint anymore. Yeah, and I'll keep learning too. I hope we can make this work out. Yeah, definitely. Fingers crossed. <sighs> What's wrong? Nothing. Hey! When you and Eleanor made your pact together, she gave you a true name, right? Was it a good one? Uh... True name? What's that? It's a special name in the ancient tongue given to a Moloch as a necessary step in forming a pact with a human. I gave Bienfu the name Fushikas. It means thing. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. It's just my own little way of showing affection. So what kind of name did you get, Luffy said? I... Uh, What's the matter? She didn't give you a really weird name like Mogulu gave Bienfu, did she? If you're not happy with it, I can talk to Eleanor about it later. So go on and tell me- I'm fine with it! And I can't tell you anyway! Well, you don't have to get so worked up about it. A true name is not something a Moloch just casually divulges to others. They carry a special meaning to us. Speaking it to anyone other than our Pact Keeper carries a special meaning. Between comrades, it means we trust them with our lives. In other cases, it's... Practically a confession of love! You... could have said something sooner, you know. Luffy sets at a delicate age. You should be more careful in the future. Oh, really? It's just another way of showing affection. Mm-hmm. Backless outfit locks it. Oh, yeah. Uh, got that from Illinois, didn't I? Yeah, I like the jacket more. What about Luffy? Uh, his makes more sense as well. At least now I believe we're going into that way. Since a skit popped up. to know about it's flying free but could it still be a therian i just felt an earth pulse point it's that way somewhere near the top of that mountain let's check it out <laughs> all right a new area this should be fun Although it is a massive zone, so it might get be a little bit of a pain to get through. But anything can happen here. I could get another game over. All grinding. Ah, oh, you oh, son of a! I knew that was gonna happen too. Did a good job. So trade improves my profession. I uh efficiency in the uh, things I have. So increasing it tenfold from a bunch of battles should actually increase it by a fair amount. Dallas Lake Road. Wait, what? 
I can get to the Gallus like both of you. Continuing on where I left off, but that actually is a good po point to uh, go into. Since it switches zones, the enemy is going to arrive, thus I could grind. Pretty sweet. So there's a path we can go down there, a path that seems to be closed off, two of them, and... A red alert enemy. Still cannot remember the name of it. I know it's red something. So we might go deal with that enemy. If we even can, that is. Son of a... Um... Did that just happen? Was well, that on such low health that I just got taken out instantly? I mean, this thing is a level 36. Well, that was interesting. Definitely wasn't expecting that to happen, jeez. But they are definitely a considerable bit higher than uh, everyone else in the party. Oh look, the cat's box. Do I have a spirit? Probably not. Not even close. So yeah, I may need to grind here. Anything up over here? So that's a damn spirit that wants to teleport in front of me. You're not gonna trick me, okay? Unless I'm just absolutely not paying attention. Or you just teleport literally directly in front of me and I can't stop in time. That ain't gonna happen. This big thing right here. That dragon potentially is either the Therian or it's this red alert enemy. Oh no, the red alert enemy is uh, one of these peacocks. Well. Time to see if we'll win or lose. Probably over 40. I don't think we have a chance! King Peacock level 42. Oh, uh, it's fire and uh melee, right? Earth resistance. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh, 
Rising Moon, Searing Edge. Wind Whip. Did you think you could escape me? I'm only at Ace of Life 4. Grants plus one maximum souls to characters wearing equipment that has been enhanced. A total of 20 or more times. Oh, come on! I don't even freaking have, uh... I'm not even capable of going to 9 yet. I can only go to 6. That sucks. Guess I will see you guys on the next path. Oh, really? So close. Crystal, crystal iron. C. Scout ship departed. Yeah. I can really feel the Earth Pulse now. It's up above. Guess we're in for some mountain climbing then. Yep. Didn't take long. Slowly get around the edge. Slowly. Slowly but surely. I can't wait to take a good look around. Whoa, 
Now that's what I call a view. I agree that it's beautiful, but don't leap about so much. You'll fall. Hmm. I can sense many earth pulses under this place. I figured you'd notice that. An intricate web of earth pulses crisscrosses the land under the Aldina Plains. Mountains like these would normally take tens of thousands of years to form, but these popped up in about a millennia. So the earth pulses have affected the land? Exactly. Long ago, people wielded arts that allowed them to manipulate the earth pulses and control the very land itself. How could arts like that exist? Perhaps they pushed against key points on the earth pulses? Like how acupressure can improve a person's blood flow. That's a rather forced comparison. But you may be right. Either way, those arts have been lost for eons. I'm impressed, Aizen. You know a lot about everything. Not at all. There's so much I don't know. For example, the name of these flowers. That's why I travel. To learn. Aldina alabaster grass. That's the name of this flower? Yes. A long time ago. My brother showed me a picture of it in one of his books. They're fragile flowers. They die quickly on their own. But if enough of them gather together, they can survive. Fields of them form beautiful white carpets of flowers. In some cultures, they symbolize kinship. The bonds between people. Kinship? Huh. I'll remember that. You and your brother taught me something new today. I'll never forget either. Alright, now slowly but surely go get this chest before we activate that event. And the spirits. Gold spar fragment, that's new. Hmm. Maybe this is where Glavin Basin was based off of. Here! This is the Earth Pulse point I've been feeling! No Therian and no barrier. I must have gotten it wrong again. I wouldn't be so sure of that. That dragon could well have broken its barrier. Or it might have been too powerful for the Abbey to subdue. You could be right. After all, dragons make for the strongest demons. The problem is, we don't know if it's a Therian or not. Yeah. Let's stick with the plan and head to Stonebury to gather more information. The only one here who thinks the real problem is how we're supposed to fight a frickin' dragon? Yeah, you could be the only one. I wouldn't be surprised if you were the only one. Now, to descend from the mountain, I got the stone, buddy. <laughs> Of course, had I known that I wasn't going to get into a fight, I would have went there first. And then I would have ran all the way over there. Dang it. Okay. There's two different dungeons over here. Interesting. And enemies keep trying to kill me. Wait, what? Teleporter? Here? Alright. Off to Stonebury I go. He's got a decent wall here. Now I am curious though, which continent was our home from? That I don't know. Alright, if I were a Bloodwing, where would I be? We'll start at the inn. It only makes sense. What are you going to do with all those? Make jam? I'm going to feed them to my chickens. That way they'll lay eggs with purple yolks. What? You know that won't work, right? It sure will. The 
color of yolks change depending on what a hen eats. My grandma taught me that. Hmm. Actually, we always feed our chickens corn. Is that why their yolks are yellow? What are you gonna do with purple eggs anyway? Tourists are coming from the capital again, right? I bet they've never seen purple eggs. So I figure I could sell them for a lot. <gasps> Maybe I can even make our village famous! You've thought this out. But will they really sell? You know what they'd make, right? Purple fried eggs, purple omelets, purple egg fried rice. Ugh. Hey, would you want to eat a purple omelet? S strange things sell, right? You don't have to be so mean just because you can't think of a better idea. Oh, sorry. Here, let me help you. Fine. Go catch a whole barrel full of jewel beetles. If we feed them to my chickens, we'll get eggs with yolks like shining jewels. I really wouldn't want to be your chickens, but... Oh, okay. What a carefree village. But you know, this is what really makes humanity amazing to me. Attempting the impossible. Reaching for the stars, just as a matter of course. Aye. Though we may stumble countless times on our way, we can achieve anything we put our minds to. Attempting the impossible, huh? That's all well and good, but there are some lines that should never be crossed. Purple eggs. Blech. That was an interesting conversation. Raspberries, strawberries, blueberries. They all grow in abundance around Stonebury. We even have a fairy tale about it. One day, the ground was covered with so many fallen berries, they all became stones. Stoneberries? Is that how the town got its name? The spelling has changed some, but yes. Berries are an important part of this village. We harvest local berries to make jams, pastries, gels, and all sorts of sweets. Berry-flavored gels! I've never had one. We've exported our jam and fruit for a while now, but our raspberry gels are still being perfected. Aw, rats. Are the vegetables growing in that field special, too? I don't think I've ever seen anything like them before. You've got sharp eyes. But that's right. They're a rare species of wild potato. They're red, and they're called radish bells. We discovered them in the mountains nearby. Sadly, the potatoes are actually highly poisonous. Really? They look so good. They do, but the skin and the sprouts are toxic. If you aren't careful when removing them, it's poisonville for you. Deadly poison aside, they're sweet, fluffy, and go great with butter. And when they're fried nice and crispy, they're the best. So just skin them and sell them. What's the problem? Yes, we've thought of that, but the way they are now, you have to peel off quite a bit before you get to the edible part. Peel one as big as your fist, and all you get for your trouble is a bit of meat the size of an egg yolk. That's why we're selectively breeding them. One day, they'll have only a thin layer of poisonous skin. Why not breed them to get rid of the poison altogether? With no poison, bugs will eat them, and they'll be more vulnerable to cold and heat. With potatoes, as with people, getting rid of everything harmful isn't always for the best. The water around here is ideal for producing wine and spirits. I've been thinking about fermenting something new. What will you make? This region's specialty is berries, so a berry wine? Hmm. But the chilly air and level of humidity here should be just right for making an amber draft, don't you think? Considering the geography around here, the water must contain a high mineral content. If you use it to make a rice wine, the taste will be unique. I've considered all those options, but I must create something that can surpass my greatest rival, Sleeping Princess. But that's nearly impossible to make. <laughs> exactly. Not an easy task, to say the least. Sleeping Princess is made by filling an emerald cask with water from an enchanted mountain spring and sitting it in direct sunlight for seven years. The water's magic causes it to change color each year. When it reaches the same deep green hue of the cask, it's ready. Solar fermenting, huh? It won't be easy to surpass a marvel of the winemaking world like Sleeping Princess. True, 
but I've finally found it. The ultimate stone. A gemstone? Will you make a cask from it? That would just make it an imitation. No, what I found can only be called a natural rock filter. You're filtering wine with a rock? Deep in the heart of these mountains, I found a stone that absorbs liquids. I tried using it to filter a berry wine. The taste of it was unbelievably crisp and bright. It preserved the luscious richness of the berries, while adding a clarity that left me breathless. I call it pure land wine. There is no better. May I have a taste? Uh, my apologies, but it took me ten years to make a single thimbleful. I drank that thimbleful for my tasting. It'll be about fifty years before I can make a decent batch. I doubt I'll see a full bottle in my lifetime. Fifty years, huh? Meet you back here, then? I've never been so glad not to be human. Uh, take a good look. Shut up. I'm not talking to you. Stoneberry hasn't had much luck growing just yet, but this pioneer town has a lot of potential. Trees grow well here, and the lumber is of great quality. Oh, we're also close to the quarries, so stone isn't a problem. As long as the demons are contained, this country will rebuild. The need for stone and lumber will soar. Best of all, this area is quiet, has beautiful lakes, and is a perfect place for a craftsman like me to work. And why settle for anything less? I do feel that you might be a bit short-handed here. It's hard to build without manpower. You're right. We need something to attract new settlers. Maybe some sort of specialty item? Is there any fruit or vegetable that can only be found around here? There is a type of potato called the radish bell that we grow. But it's got a few, uh, quirks. If you want to attract people, you should just ring a bell. Come to Stonebury, where the money grows on trees. Hmm. A bell tower, huh? That might actually work. We can even use local stones for the bell. The Stonebury Stone Belfry. It won't work. Huh? Try hitting a rock. Doesn't ring. Ah, oh, how could I have missed that? I'm still such a novice. My master taught me better than this. Think before you build. That's what he always said. I need to do better and not sully his name. Go on, hmm. take a good look. Shut up. You need sundries. We got sundries. Dude. Stop it. Which leads me to believe, where the heck is Lasting Bell at? If that's actually the name of the town in Zestiria. I was on my way home from a trip to Logres, crossing the Aldina Plains, when I saw it. Rain was pouring as if from buckets, and the wind was so strong I could hardly stay on my feet. From the vast darkness of the sky, a monster of tremendous size descended, like the essence of the storm itself. A huge flying demon? At that moment, a group of exorcists leapt out from their hiding spots and began to battle the demon beast. But it met their swords with its fearsome horns, and a swipe of its tail threw the noble exorcist back. Horns? And a tail? Where did the demon go? I couldn't tell you. I was so frightened, I ran away and never looked back. I hope the Abbey can get rid of it, but the beast took out three exorcists with a single blow. Come to think of it, another person was there too. He faced the demon and told it to stop. Zavid. If you're going to the Aldina Plains, you'd better be careful. Aldina Plains? Isn't that where we just came from? And if anything, I've already taken care of the, uh, marked enemy there. Well, send to blood. Fresh blood here for your reward, I take it. 1,315 for the Fiend's Rainbow Rock. Serial Killer Tree. The Vile Forest Fog Shrouded Mystery. Provides a 25% increase in the amount of he healed by healing arts used on characters at 25% or lower HP. That's awesome. It's level 42. Doesn't necessarily tell me its weakness. 
Took a look. You happy now, asshole? Huh. So I can buy a bunch of food. Now oh, shut up. In any case, I'm gonna end this episode here. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then. See you later.